So last time I spoke a lot more about um, costuming, this time I'm going to speak more about steampunk itself. Now a few people have asked a few questions online, so I'm trying to get an answer those as well. So it's called Talking Steampunk. Okay, so first of all is the definition of steampunk. Oh actually, no, who am I? That's what I do. I've been a costumer for since 1980, yeah about 1980 something, and um, member of the SCA since 94 and um, been doing steampunk since about 2007, right? 2007. Okay. so about a decade now. Um, and I've done a lot of SCA stuff, so I have actually liked doing a lot of research on the historical stuff. But I'll get a bit more into that later anyway, it's about me. Nothing me. Okay, so what is steampunk? Well, there's lots of different things. Some people say it's Victorian science fiction. Well, it's not quite Victorian science fiction. They didn't used to call science fiction science fiction back then. They called science fantasy because of these adventures where they did stuff and went to the moon and things like that. Um, so um, every now and then it goes around the forums and, and, and the community, what you're going to call it. And this seems to be one of the more recent ones. It's a retro futuristic movement that draws upon science fantasy of the 19th century. It's a neo Victorian retro futurism. So basically, we're looking back at what they wrote then and the style and stuff like that, and we're redoing it, to, we're, changing, we're changing it to our modern sensibilities. Um, it's uh, speculative fiction, so we all know what speculative fiction is, I assume. So it's science fiction, fantasy and stuff like that. There's a big debate about whether it goes, goes into science fiction or whether it goes into fantasy. A lot of people seem to think it's more under fantasy at the moment because the science... Vic, Victorians didn't always think the science worked anyway yet. So you've got things like the ether and stuff like this, which doesn't really exist. And then other people actually put it under science fiction. Often you'll go into a bookshop and you'll actually find it under science fiction. So that's a big debate. And you can talk to some people for hours and hours and hours about that one. So steam is the Victorian, all the uh, equipment, um, cogs and stuff like that, powered by steam. And the punk part comes in um, like cyberpunk hat. So around, that's when it sort of started happening. Um, you yeah, William Gibson writing um, different things. And it's bucking the system. So often steampunk stuff will go, it'll have a woman who's doing stuff that men should do. Or it's having someone who's black or something who's doing stuff they shouldn't be doing in Victorian times. Because we're writing it from our point of view. Because Victorians weren't very nice in some things. And we don't necessarily like that. So we can redo the stories and talk about that. And a lot of the time you'll find uh, that steampunk will look at... Um, society and talk about society in the stories when you're reading the books and stuff like that like science fiction does so i actually tend to put it on the science fiction camp because of that because it does tend to look at that a lot okay if you want any questions if you have any questions as we go just let me know and yeah how old is steampunk someone said that was one of the questions they said well, how long has it been around now some people say again oh it's been around since the 1800s well no because that was science fantasy. It was different. They were looking at stuff that was happening at their times and they were writing about that. We're looking at stuff that's happening back then and rewriting it. Okay? So it's different. So technically, if you look at um, literature, it was, it was happening in sort of the 70s, a lot of stuff came in with Michael Moorcock and stuff like that. However, there was a TV show called Wild Wild West, which was very steampunk, and that happened to start on my birthday. So I was really happy about that. So. Then you know my birthday and how old I am. Okay, so you had Michael Moorcock was writing stuff that vaguely had steampunk, if you look at it now, um, the elements of it. And then you had um, James Blaylock coming in. So Jetta, Powers and Blaylock are called the grandfathers of science fiction because they write a lot of the That's original steampunk. stories. Um, then you're coming in more into, we're going to talk about this in a minute, William Gibson and with the Difference Engine, which probably you at least know about or have heard about or have read. And it's talking about how... Um, so, uh, uh, technology comes in and how that changes the society. So it's really starting to get into the punk side of it um, and dystopia and stuff like that. Then, so that's the sort of literary type thing that was happening along with science fiction and stuff. And then in the 1990s, there was this sort of re people getting interested again, but they weren't necessarily getting interested just in literature. They were starting to make costumes and they were starting to um, make things like at the back when you get just making this really amazing stuff there, and there was the Neuromancer, what's his name, who does the beautiful... Um, uh, Datamancer. Datamancer, Datamancer, he unfortunately died a few years ago. He <coughs> made beautiful uh, computers that were steampunk computers, and you've probably seen them on the internet, they literally just turn up. 
He just turned back around. They're well, absolutely gorgeous. Warehouse 13. Yes, mm. Warehouse 13, yes. So uh, I didn't go into the TV stuff this time because we talked in length about that last time. And currently you've got things like Gal Carragher who's doing more paranormal fantasy steampunk. You've got Jim Butch who's just come, had his first steampunk um, book come out as well. You've got Sheree Priest, although uh, she's going back into writing horror again now. And Michael Pryor is another local one, and I write stuff. Mine's more sort of Victorian steampunk mysteries. And there's quite a few. Um, um, if you go onto my YouTube, um, I, we did a thing recently about 30 years of steampunk, because we'll get on that in a second. And um, my friend uh, Lynn from Queensland, who runs um, Steampunk Sunday, our uh, Facebook page, she um, did a whole thing on specifically on Australian steampunk writers. So you can actually go on that, and she lists a whole heap of them before you can connect to. <coughs> so the origin of the term steampunk was actually only in um, 1987. It's really quite scary. Uh, so happy anniversary, 30 years. So it's actually um, <coughs> K.W. Jetta, who actually wrote to Locus magazine, he was talking about his new, you can actually read the whole thing there for him, he was talking about his um, new book and they didn't really have a term for the type of book that was starting to be written by a lot of people and he suggested the name steampunk and it sort of stuck eventually so that's what that one means. Okay, when is steampunk? Well traditionally steampunk is very Victorian or Edwardian in, in, in the era that it's set in um, and we've got some dates there for you there. Uh, it can be future, set in the future you know, the, the, the world's gone crashing and you know, they're coming up back with steam-powered type of um, the technology or dystopian. Um, there's even been steampunk zombies, you name it. We'll get onto that later too. Um, so it's not historic though, it's an anachronistic because it's not just doing normal history, it's getting normal history and it's changing it. That's why I love it because I can twist it, you know, go in and you research Jack the Ripper and then you can come out with your answer at the end and make it all steampunky, it's great. Um, it's not necessarily Victorian and there's actually a growing trend um, and if you haven't seen it, this one was done on um, Kickstarter a while ago and they're actually doing another one. The next one they're doing is on uh, characters with disabilities um, and it uh, actually has the stories of set where there's nothing from Europe, so it's India or Asia or whatever. So there's actually a lot of people in there. Steampunk India, um, she's lovely. So um, she writes um, stuff from India because she's Indian and lives in England. So okay, some steampunk tropes. Okay, what do you think means steampunk? What, do, what what's something that you and you can look up there? Hang on. What do you think would be something that you would think would be steampunk? The <laughs> yeah. So I've got stuff up here. Anything else you can think? So you've got goggles. Yeah, they're down there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, the next one. No. Yeah. Random brass things. <laughs> I've got another thing. So random brassy looking things. R random brassy yeah. looking things. So there's yeah. so there's there's anything else that you think? What, what what would you think? What do you think is the most steampunky thing? What to you mean steampunk? What you're wearing. What I'm wearing. What, what goggles? Yeah, the goggles. The, the hat. The little, the little light thing as well. That's oh, don't turn it on, is it all? No, no. no. Turn it on, folks. It actually works. And you, would you believe that that is a book light? That I painted up. <laughs> Yay! For the second hand stuff. Okay, so there you go, is it working now? Yeah. yeah! Okay, right, so then, so that's the, so you've got, often have mad scientists, you have stories that are twisted, um, history changes, um, there's actually, I can't remember his name, I'm terrible at names, he's actually writing uh, a steampunkish type thing set in the Second World War, but it's not diesel punk, it's definitely steampunk. So there's a whole thing there. Um, I'm so, actually, well, the, um, the, um, Daleks that were set in World War II um, in, in the Doctor Who yeah. episode. Doctor Who yeah. very steampunk. So yeah, then oh, hang on. Is that right? Well, you, yeah, you, just, you just got to that one. Yeah, okay. So, steam, steampunk subgenres. <coughs> so, you can, steampunk is lots of stuff. You've got cog punk. Okay, that's cogs and gears. It's pretty self explanatory. There's Tesla punk where they start bringing in. What have I done wrong? Uh, they start bringing in those little tubes and stuff like that. And it's not quite the electricity and it's like the um, plasma balls. We're talking about before when we get like I'm making a steampunk ghostbusters thing with plasma balls and that's sort of more closer theoretically to Tesla punk. It's this big sliding thing here. <laughs> Wild West, there's a lot of that, especially in America, um, where they've got the big rifles and stuff like that and the whole thing is quite they actually have a 
convention in somewhere. It would be interesting. You could steampunk yeah. the English Civil War because mm. they got yes, right you can. the whole thing. And that's the thing is, you can do anything. Nerf punk. Now, I put nerf punk in because someone said, "What the hell's nerf punk?" Well, see this. Yeah. yeah. You see this? No, no, no. This is before it gets painted, oh. right? So what happens is some people got together and said, okay, well, everyone goes and steampunks up their Nerf guns. What if we didn't steampunk up the Nerf gun? We left it and we use the colours. Oh. Okay. So if I do it right, ta -da, there, yeah. that's Nerf punk. Yeah. So oh they use God. the yeah. colours that are in the Nerf guns. So you don't but change the gun, you change yourself. Flip it around. It's so much fun. And this is why I like steampunk because you don't have to be serious, you can have fun. So that's what Nerf Punk is, and I hope the person who asked that's here and I don't know, don't know what he looks like. So, so okay. steampunk isn't just costumes, and it isn't just books. It's actually a creative movement. <coughs> there are people <coughs> that actually do dress up in this sort of stuff every day, not full on steampunk, some do, with vests and stuff like that. Um, I always think of like, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. So, um, it's music and television and art and books and lifestyle and making things. And some people now actually make their living at it. Architecture. Like, the, sorry. Architecture. Architecture. Yeah. Um, in our house, if you've been to our house, we've got little areas that are very steampunky. I love those because I'm allergic to dust. I love those glass dome things. They go over almost everything in our house. Whenever I find them, I buy them because it covers things over, it's easy to dust because I'm all pushing to dust which is why I've got this. So yeah, so I love that. Okay, okay. so literature, so books, comics, um, probably most of you have heard of Girl Genius and stuff like that. Um, then you've got the make it, Maker's Ethic. Now a good example of the Maker's Ethic is at the back table. Where is he? There. Um, Anthony gets, he does so much stuff. I look at them going, yeah, I was going to do that, I was going to do that, I just haven't got around to it because you know, I'm writing and I've got to do that. Um, uh, we'll talk about, a bit more about make, that Maker's Ethic in a minute. So you've got the art. There are people that... Um, um, James Ning. He does gorgeous artwork. He's actually doing the art for the next uh, Steampunk World Anthology. And he does some beautiful stuff. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. I'm so envious. Music. Uh, music can be jazz. It can be punk. It can be retro. It can be um, 40s electro swing. It can be traditional folk. It can be um, what's that other one? Hip hop. What's the other one? Hip hop, chap hop. Hip hop. Yeah, it can be, there's lots of stuff. Uh, um, it's. Um, <coughs> I heard a good one. Uh, there's, a, there's a new DVD out. It's a, a documentary. I'm gonna play that later if there's time. Um, and it uh, talks to a lot of people like Gal Carragher and Airship Ambassador and a few people and stuff like that, and talks about probably stuff and some controversies and things. And the quote on there was, steampunk isn't the t style of music, it's the words. And what's <coughs> that? I think that's a good way of describing it because there's just so many different avenues you can go to in the music. And yeah. In movies and television, so name a steampunk movie. What do I know? Yeah, a lot of people, that's the first one people go to, yes. We, uh, when, we, when, when people go, what steampunk is that? Here we go. Yes, yes, sort of, yes. <laughs> Doctor T. Back in it's Future diesel three. punk, but diesel, some diesel punk. Yeah. Um, Back in Future Three. Yes. Yeah. 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 You could say it has, yes, there's a lot of Got things elements. that have steampunk yeah. elements. Yeah. elements. Yeah. And there's a lot of movies that have steampunk elements before steampunk kind of thing. Uh, America got excited by steampunk about five years ago when that horrible television show came out. Oh my god, that fashion steampunk. Oh god. Um, and, and you had CSI and, and a whole heap of the other shows, Castle, probably did the best one, mm -hmm. had little steampunk thingies. So it's probably more than five years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and they thought that, you know, I think, I think America thinks, well, we can make money, but that's not what steampunk's about. Steampunk's not about mm -hmm. making lots and lots of money because it's, it's, trendy, it's trendy, it's it's different. So they didn't quite get it. So they ignore us a bit now. <laughs> How about the place in New Zealand? They make mm -hmm. money out of it. A pleasure in New Zealand. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with making money out of it. I wouldn't try to make my living out of writing it. But the thing is, when when the big, it actually, um, fashion companies and stuff over there went into it. I knew some were staying in it because they like it. Um, but it, they, it wasn't the big thing that they thought it was going to be. So, 
We didn't come in with the new hipsters. It's, the thing is, um, we'll get onto that in a minute too, it's actually often anti um, uh, money making. Yeah. Anti yeah. Anti it's right. the punk in the steampunk. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so costumes. So a lot of you do costumes. So costume tropes. Goggles, top hats, bat, uh, canes. We've got some canes up there too. And you can actually make canes yourself. You can, there's some, you can get cheap canes in a lot of shops with really cool like, dog heads and dragons and stuff. Or you can go down to the, to the hardware store and get some wood and paint it up, a little rubber end, and the end of a curtain rail, and you get your own. Uh, corsets, of course, I'm not wearing mine today because I can't breathe. Uh, but I've got some examples of corsets over there, and they can be full corsets. Um, a lot of the, there's a trend in steampunk to wear them on the, on the top because they look fashionable and they look really cool but you can actually wear them underneath too just to get the shape of the dress so with steampunk you can do everything from you know period dress with a bit of steampunky on it to the full-on nothing looking like reality at all so that's the good thing about it our gadgets mechanical <laughs> limbs now you had some mechanical limbs on you when you came in yes um, gadgets, 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 gadgets. I love gadgets. I didn't bring my wings. I forgot to bring my wings. Uh, they're not as good as your wings. I'm going to be. Gears and cogs. Now, <laughs> some people that go, don't wear cogs unless they work. Well, you know, it's up to you. I've got a lot of cogs on today, so they're more like they're more like jewelry pieces. So, anyway. The brass accessories, we're talking about brass before, brass, 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 pocket watches, monocles, we've got some different um, things like that. So there's different sorts of... Um, yeah, there it is. Uh, this one was one of the ones that was at Savers when they had their um, Halloween. Halloween stuff. So what else do you think would be... Um, frock coats. Which screen? Frock coats. Oh yeah, frock coats. Oh, frock coats. Yeah, frock coats. Guys, wear frock coats. There you go, some examples there. What tropes can you see there? Come on, it's an interactive one. Goggles. Well, it's for chemical limbs and. Gadgets. Oh, right. Frog coats. It's a steampunk green lantern, it looks like. It is a steampunk green lantern. We're going to talk about that one. And making series. Yeah, there. Stand so up. you've got mashups as well, zombies, fairies, Star Wars, Star Trek, ninjas, comic books, Doctor Who, Ghostbusters, that's just the start. Okay, so what you've got is a lot of people do things like... Well then there is a series <laughs> which is uh, steampunk um, uh, BSG. Yes, there's, there's a whole heap of stuff and there's actually comic books as well. So the thing is, <coughs> you can have lots of fun. I have my steampunk fairy catcher. Um, it says that there's, there's so many things you can do. Mm. Maker's ethic. Probably most of you know about the maker's ethic, no? Okay, um, steampunk isn't just recreating things, it's reimagining it, because you're changing things, you're flipping it around. Um, it's celebrating a return to a slower era where you could actually learn a craft. These days, technology goes so fast, you can't really learn a lot about it. That's why I've got him, because I've got you know, IT, over my head. Okay, Victorians were enthusiastic about it. Um, Things were individual. It wasn't like everyone has the same iPad and you have to make that iPad work for you, but you can't change that iPad. In fact, some places they actually make it legal to you actually change stuff, anything on it, which is annoying. Okay, it's do it yourself is probably the best way to explain maker's ethic. Upcycling, you know what upcycling is? You get something, you change it to something else. So you go to the shop and you'll get nothing. Nerf gun. You get a nerf gun, you pull it apart, paint it up, make it into something else. Um, steampunk uh, often looks at, well, the Victorians themselves, they had some pretty yucky looking, you know, diesel everywhere and coal everywhere, and it's pretty thick. But they also made things, other things were made pretty when the first telephone came out, it was really pretty. Um, so it's all to do with that. So you're not making something that's not just functional, it looks good. It looks arty or it looks beautiful or it looks, you know, cool or whatever you want to call it. Um, if you look at Anthony's little box back there, he's made. You look at it, you put the lights on, it looks really cool. Um, so yeah, there you go, it's one of the names. Anti-consumerism. Um, a lot of steampunk is often anti-consumerism. I went to one convention and this girl was selling Victorian steampunk stuff coffee. already made up. <laughs> and she couldn't figure out why it wasn't selling. I suggested to her, I said, had you, had you ever thought of just having the basic bits that you got in? Because you can um, still mark them up and make a lot of money. Because most of the people I know want to go and go, oh, I want that, 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 and that, because I can make something out of it. She goes, no, 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 no. 
That's not what you do. I'm going, well, you obviously don't know steampunk very well. She tried to make money at it this year. That's the thing, it's anti-consumerism. It's, I think, people who understand it can do it. Um, but most of the time, people want to go and go, oh, I want that, I want the tubes. There's a guy down at the steampunk festival last year who was selling secondhand stuff. And you get him to fix secondhand stuff, and I heard people going, oh, I can make that out of that. And we're making it so it's not just disposable. So I love going to dock shops and going, what can I do with that? So um, what I'm wearing today is see, that's op shop, that's made, that's made. This is op shop redone. Um, over here, that was bought. That was bought. I didn't have to do anything with that. And that was just, as I said, it was a um, $2 book light. It's got a little creepy thing here. And I just re-sprayed it. I think it was, I think it was green or pink or something. It was horrible. And it's, yeah, so that's, you can do that. Okay, it basically it's individuality. So there are places that sell steampunk clothing. That's great, because a lot of people just want to have the look. But then they, a lot of people who really get into it want to do something beyond that. So they'll get bits and pieces and then they'll go and they'll do stuff to it. And um, you've probably seen some of these around, um, and obviously these are made now. That, that's just, he told me how he made it. I've forgotten it, but it's quite oh. amazing how he put all these bits and pieces together. Oh. Right? Oh. Oh. Yes, yes, he told me how he made it. I can't remember it now. But all these different bits and pieces. It's and supposed to be a spider. Yeah. If you, look at, if you look closely at stuff, you can actually go, well, that's PVC piping and that's a bicycle pump, and you can actually go and find a lot of stuff, which is really cool. Having said that, you can also find really cool original pieces and put them together in different ways. <clears throat> probably recognise a few people there. So steampunk encourages individuality and imagination, and that's why I love it, I think. Okay, sourcing steampunk items. So you can make them, you can get someone to make them for you. Often people do swappies, I'll make you this if you make me that. Um, you can buy if it's already made. You can add bits. So if you're spending a fortune buying something, you probably don't want to change it too much, but if you go to the op shop and find something, you can glue it and paint it and do all sorts of wonderful things with it, because it only costs you like two bucks. You know, who cares? Um, you can actually commission people. There's uh, quite a few people that do um, different pieces, and, and they can do some glorious work if you've got the money. And it's worth it, and it's, some of it's just... <laughs> Gorgeous. Recycling upcycling, we talked about that. I'm, I've been an op shopper since I was a kid, I think. Um, and garage sales is amazing what you find there. And eBay, although be careful on eBay because some people do put horrendously expensive prices on it. Um, this is just an example of a couple of guns we got recently. The fart gun. I got cost of mine for that one. Yeah. Um, so and I think that it was $2 and that was $5 and that was $4 or something. And I'm going to pull them apart and make some of out of them. So. Why I like steampunk? Well, steampunk has history. I'm a history fan. I do DD, I do SCA, so I like sort of stuff like that. Um, art, you can make it arty, you can do the artwork, you can paint things on your costumes. You've got some gorgeous armour, which is just a work of art itself. Um, cool costumes, they're so cool costumes. Um, imagination and creativity, because some of those things you go, wow, I would have never thought to do a steampunk whatever. Um, some of them are quite amazing. Um, and as a writer, I get to twist with history. So I get to do the history thing, do all things, go, oh, but what if this happened? You know, and so, so it's, it's fun. And that's what I like about it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so there's... Um, quite a few books around. Um, I picked these ones because they're probably the most commonly ones that are mentioned a lot and I've got them here if you want to have a look at them. So Steampunk goes through and tells you a lot about history and it's quite up to date to about oh at least a couple of years ago now I think. I'm trying to remember what the latest thing in there is. Um, Steampunk Bible again you can look things up in there and how to draw Steampunk for people who are arty. So there's a few other books as well. Finding Steampunk there are lots and lots of Steampunk Facebook groups. Can you read that? Okay, so there's there's local ones, there's ones that most have tried to go for Australia based ones. Which one? Which one? Oh, you know what? I, I, I cut and paste it and I thought I'd got them all. Um, that's for the person who asked about the park, okay? Um, the title, the title is Time Traveller 
is actually uh, oh. tell her, it's actually Tara Moss, and she's actually I've been following her for quite a while now. She's um, an outspoken uh, feminist, and she's quite an amazing woman, and writes a crime as well. So she's smart, she's pretty. Um, but she's actually really like steampunk as well, and she goes along to um, Iron Fest, and she's going along to another one this week, next weekend, or next weekend, and she does steampunk costumes, and she's actually got quite some lovely ones. Of course, she's got lots of money to make some of these things out of, mm -hmm. and she's recently started going into making her own costumes. So um, she does a lot of stuff from there as well. So actually, steampunk seems to be quite popular with a lot of um, um, celebrities. Celebrities, actually, it's amazing. You go, you, we've been a couple of times gone to conventions and get sort of. Oh, there's some forums too. Um, there was well, there was one, one called Steampunk mm -hmm. Empire, but the person who actually um, owned and paid for the um, domain let it lapse, so they come back to Steampunk Dominion. It's basically they're recreating the brass bottles and Steampunk magazine, although they haven't been doing as much there. Mm -hmm. Steampunk events. <laughs> there's actually a lot. This isn't this isn't all of them. This is just ones I could find you know, or that I knew about in Australia. See the Iron Fest and let's go, it's not the steampunk event only, but it actually has a steampunk tribe, I think they call them. Um, would like to go one day. Steampunk at altitude is a new one I've heard about just recently. There's of course there's we want to go to this one, don't we though? In New Zealand mine that one off. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, there's a new steampunk fair was there last year and it's happening in, in, in Tasmania and they're really pushing that one as well. Uh, this is a new one I heard of recently, of course it's a steampunk festival called Adelaide which is moved to August so I get one less month of writing to do that. Um, the steampunk Pirate Ball, we've had that twice, three times now, I'm trying to remember, two or three times. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, our third, they're going to be doing that again so I'll put that up there as well. That raises the charity. And the Waterworks Steampunk Victoria Fair, that's, so that's just some. Um, of course, when you go to conventions, there's always some Steampunk people mm -hmm. there too. The only problem is that now Iron Fest is going to have a problem because they've had to move the Roman so Fest. The Easter. thing is, I believe that the Lithgow Council is in with Iron Fest, so, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what I got from Mother's Day. Do they know me or what? <laughs> I've actually got these things that don't have fingers, it's really quite sad. Really. Anyway, so they're people who help me take photos. A bit more about me, and I have books. So, any questions, anything else? <laughs> that um, airship in Australia um, early book. Um, so that was just spe yep. speculative science fiction. That was a science, science fantasy. fantasy. Yes, science so that, fantasy. I put it up there because people go, "Oh, didn't have anything set in Australia." But they did. Okay, that one. There you go. Can you actually read? Yeah. So um, a lot of people go, oh, they didn't see much of stuff. Well, yeah, Edgar Allan Poe wrote one called The Balloon Hoax. We'll talk to David Davis. I was like, yeah, 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 I've got that down there. I've heard that. Um, 3,000 Leaves on the Sea, that's a steam hunt We all know that one. Time Machine, we all know that one. The Airship in Australia was written by Henry Newton Williams in 1892. So they were still doing stuff in Australia then, so we were, we were part of stuff then. So, hmm. The yeah. latest sort of one was steampunk in a sense, and it was when they did Hellboy. That had quite a bit of yeah, that has elements as well. So the, the, the thing is, is lots, because steampunk is so fluid and such a big scope, there's lots of things that have steampunk elements. It's like Doctor Who has steampunk, a lot of steampunk elements, especially yeah. now they've changed the, the beginning to that sort of copy thing. Yeah. But it always did have, well the new one anyway particularly, always had that hint because it has the clunky mm. um, stuff that the TARDIS looks like. Looks very yeah. Victorian. You want to see when they went to one of the alternative um, console rooms, it was definitely steampunk, it was all yeah. wood and brass and everything else. Yes, the, yes, the one that um, uh, John Pertwee had. Mm -hmm. So that's the one that I'm going to be I haven't seen the one tonight, so. <laughs> but uh, it reminds me of the, the um, Empire ones that Steve did way back then. Do you remember those? Yeah, anyone knows those? So he actually did one. So um, that he had dressed up all in Empire stuff with a dome over his head and very much like that. So the one tonight. Do you remember the ones who did the War of the Worlds sort of like steampunk? Mm. <coughs> They're redoing that and setting it in Victorian time. Yeah. I'm so looking forward to that. Yeah, and we're dressed up in. Sorry? No, Conqueror? God, I hope not. No. <laughs> Oh, this is guys. It was quite well done. They, yeah, you know, they said they set up in military uniforms and said they were going to go back to Mars. 
but it was always steampunk in sort of the way they created it. And it's because it's sort of partly look, partly um, philosophy, partly this. There's just so many things that roll into it. There's also a comic book series that's uh, come in the name of the that actually set like a decade after War of the Worlds. But it's yes. all like England, and England's basically taken the technology from the tripods and whatever else they found, and they sort of re <coughs> engineered some of it, so it's half, it's a very steampunk feel to it, and they've taken the war basically to the, the rest of the marsh and still up on Mars. Yeah. So there's, there's just so many things you can do with steampunk. It's just, yeah. So. Anything else? I did actually bring a few, one I put the video on, it takes about an hour. It's one called Vintage Tomorrows, which has been out recently. It's actually a documentary. Um, it interviews a lot of uh, uh, well known people in steampunk writers, makers, costumers. Um, they talk, there's a couple of festivals they talk about. There's a bit about controversy about pith helmets. Is anyone so I've got stuff today you can look at. I've got courses and stuff like that. And Anthony has a lot of his gadgets at the back there too. Um, different types of hats. I'm trying to bring some examples of different things for people because there's a few people who haven't heard of Steampunk before. I've actually got some stuff I make as well that I sell and a book so if you haven't got a book or you're interested in a book. And I actually did today have, not because there was about six or seven people who said they were going to come in a Steampunk costume. You know? So I've got some prizes. But I think I'm going to Steampunk costume. I can't really give it to you, Anthony, because you're no, typically no. doing the joke and thing. So I'm going to give one to you. And I'm going to give one to you because you ask lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, see? Oh, oh. oh. So that's, um, if you... Uh, I talked about my YouTube thing before, so um, if you want to go on there, I've got... Uh, I actually put up videos of different events that we've done. And I've got the one, um, we did actually do a 30 years of steampunk um, uh, anniversary Facebook page event. 13 hours, I was naked. And we did then, so... Um, there's a talk about Australian steampunk authors. There's a talk about costuming. Uh, there's a talk about there's a talk, talk Lindsay about thinking about gadgets. So I've, there's an overall one that does a bit of everything, and then there's one just the other ones. If you want to know, watch that. So if, if you want, you can, I'll leave that up a little bit. And I'll put this on. Any other questions? No. You can guess I like steampunk. So.